Is that really a soft life or is that a lonely life? I feel like that is the reason that black males have a problem building platonic friendships with women to have the support system that I want. Oh, I cut her off. Uh huh. Don't hurt. Mm hmm. Duh. Period. Purr. Oh, girl, where'd you get your car? This girl, just Google it. Yeah, there's places everywhere. Just Google it. You'll find it. Really, that's what it is. I want control. That's why I'm overspending. And why do I want control? Because I don't feel like I have control of myself, which in return is letting me know I do not have a hold of myself. You can leave the city Cause all of these niggas be on you What's up you guys? I'm so happy to see you guys. Um, happy New Year. I haven't seen you guys since the New Year. I hope you guys had an awesome New Year. I hope you guys had an amazing Christmas. Um, a New Year's like video reset thing is coming up soon but not right now. Right now we're just getting into things that gave us the ick in 2022 and now most of these things are pertaining to me. If these relate to you, comment down below. Tell me what you're going through. Tell me your eggs. Tell me what's been going on, girl. I want to know. Okay, let's get into this hair. It is, um, this hair is, I think it's from Icy Hair, and it's their Deep Wave hair. I got it last year, but, um, I got it last year for a trip that I was going on and never ended up wearing it, but I, um, overplugged. And I effed it up, I put bangs in it, I did all kinds of things, girl, and I was just like, ooh, I can't. This is actually the same way that I used to, um, for my hair straightening revamp video that's right here. Um, this is the same hair. And it's a frontal, you guys, and I actually use, I actually glued it as a frontal. I don't know, I don't know if it's giving frontal. I mean, it's giving frontal, but I don't know if it's giving, maybe I need to put more powder. But let's get... I just looked over my wig stand with the wig cap is over there. I thought someone was in the corner. I said, what is that? So let's get into the first ick. One of the icks that I had from 2023 was my lack of self-discipline. Girl, I don't know what was going on and what has been going on with me for years, but I really, really lack discipline. Um, I just feel like... Honestly, and it stems from the fact that I don't have any self-love. Oh, yeah, we're gonna, this is, this is that video. This is that video. Where, you thought I was gonna be superficial? No, this is, this is that video. Um, I lack self-love. I love, I lack, like, um, caring about myself to the point that I want myself to do better. Does that make sense to y'all? Um, where's my little comb? Like, I... I don't know like I really feel like I lack self-confidence which makes me in return lack um, self-discipline because I just don't love myself enough for me to want to do better um, even as it pertains to like certain relationship patterns that I had before in the past I obviously don't have those now but I had really terrible relationship patterns like I would always get get with the same kind of guy and um, that's because at the time I didn't really feel like I was worth, I was worth much. You get what I'm saying? So like, I didn't have any self-love, which in turn I didn't have any discipline to avoid the certain kind of things that I did not want in a partner or in a relationship. And yet I still went after them. You know what I mean? As well as um, discipline in like school. Like I wanted to get A's, I wanted to do all that stuff, but I never studied and I never did what I needed to do to get the A's. Um, obviously now I've graduated, so also I'll like give you an update on that because my graduation story um, is quite interesting. But um, yeah, just things like that and it just really gives me the ick. Like I'm really like, oh, Like girl, if you don't get yourself some self-love so that you can have self-discipline, like please, ASAP and right now. So since we are on the topic of like self-love and everything like that, I feel like something else that gave me the ick was um, lack of knowledge of what I really wanted. So for example, 
I always say like I want I want friends I want friends I want friends I want more friends I want da 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 but I need to ask myself like what do I really want is it friends or is it stability and support now that's what I need to seek after I want stability and I need support that's why I want friends so I need to tackle and understand first what stability and support looks like for me before I go tackle wanting friends. Once I tackle that and understand that within myself, then I feel that friends and that support system will come along. Does that make sense? We got to understand what we really want. Some of y'all talking about some, oh, I want to be a millionaire. I want to be a millionaire. I want to be, da, da, da. I want to be an influencer. Okay, why do you want to be an influencer? Why do you want to be a millionaire? Like, what is the why? Just so you can have a lot of money, but are you willing to handle family asking you for money? Are you willing to be a support system for a lot of people? Are you, you know, willing to pay the heavy taxes that come with being a millionaire? So there has to be like a bigger purpose as to why, because if you do not know the why when that comes, like this, all of this is going to overwhelm you. Another example is I really want to be an influencer. Um, more like actually I don't want to be an influencer I want to be an, an an impactor honestly I don't know if that's a word but I just I coined that okay I coined that Everybody ready for being an impactor. do not take it it is what day is it it is January 20th 2023 I said it here first okay I want to be an, an impactor but why why do I want to be a, an impactor and when I think back I'm like you know what well it's because I feel like people don't understand me I feel like people have a lack of knowledge of who I am. I feel like I want people to see me for who I am. That's what I'm seeking after. That's why I want to be an influencer so that my I can feel like my voice is heard. So I need to understand and have knowledge of I want my voice to be heard. This is why I'm doing this. Because if I go into I just want to be famous and I just want to be the next da 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 da. When those hateful comments come, when all those things come, my heart is going to be shattered um, and that's not to say my heart is still not going to be shattered with you know um, with the fact that I'll even though I know why I want to be an impactor I'll get negative comments it it will still um, help me to know my reason as to why I will continue to do what I'm doing does that make sense to y'all uh-uh uh-uh I'm really trying to get into that habit of having um, having knowledge. Knowledge is power, and nothing is more powerful than understanding yourself. Um, I'm definitely in a season of trying to understand myself a little bit more, so that I can understand the people around me. Um, wow, this is a hot mess. I should have done this on the mannequin. Ah. Oh, tisk tisk tisk. But yeah, as we all know, we are all a mirror of each other. So if you have people in your lives, no matter whether you think, oh, she's this, she's that, that person is a mirror of you. Um, that's just how life works. There's no way to get around it. They are a mirror of you. Every single person that you in contact that you get in contact with. Um, like you always hear me say, life works better when we work together. Life just makes more sense when we're working together. And that is because we are working together. We are here to help each other. One person may have something that you are lacking, so that person in your life has what you need. And it can be um, for a good outcome, and, and it can also be for a what is seen as a negative outcome when really it's to strengthen you and better you. For example, I have a friend right now in my life, um, and we have gone into many fights. We have bumped heads a lot. We have disagreed a lot we've taken breaks from our friendship we've you know there's been a lot of things going on and a lot of the things that have happened have honestly put a mirror to my face because I don't think that she realizes that she is um, the catapult for my self help and my my like my self healing journey as it pertains to friendship because honestly the things that we go through puts a mirror up to my face where I'm like Benny like you do be doing that so why are you doing that you get what I'm saying that's what that friendship it's like it's like a healing source for me because um there's a lot of things that are always thrown in my face um 
not in a bad way, but thrown in my face as in I'm beginning to be aware that, oh my God, I do do this. I do say these things. I do do that. Like, wow, I probably need to change that. Like, it's probably not good. We all work together and everybody is a mirror. So what I'm saying is that sometimes people are in your life and they're there to, you know, help you. And even if it shows out your flaws, um, it shows out your negative side, they're there to help you. Um, so just understanding that everything is working for you and you just have to take what is happening in your life as an opportunity to learn something. Another thing that gives me the ick is literally overspending and impulsivity. Girl, when I tell you that the way that I overspend and the way that I am impulsive when I overspend is crazy. The only time that I overspend is when it's impulsive. That is terrible. Um, I, I, need, I need to figure that out. And honestly, again, it really goes back to my self-love and my self-worth. It really goes back to whenever I feel very emotional, that's what I lean to. And that's what a lot of us lean to. And it's not always an emotional problem. Sometimes it is a true addiction and sometimes it is just something that people want to do. But for me, as, as I said, again, I'm speaking really solely for me. But if you resonate, that's awesome. Um, that I, whenever I'm emotionally inclined, negatively emotionally inclined, oh, oh, we go into Target. And, and my, okay, mind you, I don't, the thing is too, I don't, I'm not an impulsive spender on things that are quality. Girl, I'll go to Ross and run up like 50, 60, 100 dollars just because I'm feeling emotional when really I could have spent like 60, 100 dollars on a really nice smelling perfume or a really nice whatever, but I go and because I just want to collect a whole bunch because I want control. Really, that's what it is. I want control. That's why I'm overspending. And why do I want control? Because I don't feel like I have control of myself, which in return is letting me know I do not have a hold of myself. I do not have control of myself. And I need a to work on myself a little bit more. Again, all of these things go back to the self. At least for me, it does. For me, all of these things go back to the self. I don't know if this is getting like straight, 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 but I don't care because I know I'll probably have to go back over it anyway because, you know, Georgia be human girl every other day. So that's fine. But yeah, like I, I need to get a hold of that. I really overspent a lot um, last year and I don't want to do that again this year. I don't. I don't. And this is not even a New Year's resolution. This is what I'm just trying to focus my life on. Because I find that if I make a New Year's resolution, girl, those resolutions aren't even happening. Because <laughs> it's like too much pressure, I feel like, for me. Um, for some people, it works. For me, it does not. Um, I'm also not making like a vision board or anything this year. I've learned my lesson the past two years, y'all have seen. Like, I didn't get much done. Um, I'm looking at them now. I mean... Some of them I did, but not a lot of them. And I don't want that pressure and I don't want that feeling of defeat um, at the end of the year when I feel like, oh, I didn't accomplish what I said I was going to accomplish. Um, ooh, this back is terrible. I should have done this on the mannequin head because this back is out of control ridiculous. Something else that gave me the ick this year or this past year was unforgiveness girl mm -mm. when I tell you I realized in 2022 that I was the most unforgiving person I've ever met baby and I have a bunch of sins that I expect God to forgive me for and I can't even forgive this person but it's crazy because I'm like, well, how can I? They did this to me and they knew it would hurt me and they, this is on purpose and da 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 da. Girl, I gotta get out of that. I gotta get out of that because if I want to continue to be forgiven and if I want to have the support system that I want, I need to understand that I need to forgive. Harboring people in your heart Fs their life up. And I'll be honest with you, a lot of y'all folks be like 
cutting people off and being like, oh, yeah, I'm done with them, blah, 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 blah. Whole time, that person hates you. And as I said, we all work together. So all of us, we're all an umbilical cord linked to one source, and that is God, right? So we are all, like, intertwined together. Your conscience is my conscience. My conscience is yours. Now, if I hate you, and you think, oh, I cut her off, uh-huh, don't hurt, mm-hmm, duh, period, per. But this person hates you right now. You think you're going to prosper in life? You think you're going to prosper in life having someone have that feeling towards you? And you can get all your crystals, and you can pray to Abba Father, but I'm telling you, Someone having anger with you is going to affect you. It's going to put a cloud over your life. You're not going to be able to obtain the blessings that you really want to obtain. Because there's someone who is also created in the image of God who is who hates you. Who is angered by you. And girl... It's just not gonna fly and like you think that you are living some kind of glorious life because you cut someone off or you know you whatever whatever you did like you you think that you're doing something but it's better to cut people off on good terms than to cut them off on bad because that is going to come back to you tenfold like I, I don't I don't really understand why people don't believe in that kind of thing like when you do something to someone, it will get back, it will get done back to you. Do unto others as you want to be done to you. It will, it will come back to you one way or another. You will either feel that same emotion, you will have that same experience. That's why I be minding my own effing business. You will never catch me being like, saying like, oh, that couldn't be me. Oh, she took him back. That couldn't be me. Oh, she's staying in a job that she doesn't like. That couldn't be me. Because baby, that could very well be me. It could very well be me having to stay stuck in a job that I really hate. It could very well be me, you know, going bankrupt or whatever. And like, no, I just, I, mm -mm, that mindset, oh, it couldn't be me, baby. Yes, it could. Yes, it could. It, it, if it could be them, it could be you. I don't know why you think you're exempt from life. People be thinking they're exempt from life. You're not exempt from life. I don't, life is coming. Life is coming, and this is not like some negative, like pessimistic type of video, but life is coming, and like, I don't know. I, I try to, I try to, I try to stay away from that, those kinds of topics and those kinds of things and saying those kinds of things because I remember, oh my gosh, this is, I remember when I was working at, a, at somewhere and um, the, the person I was working with, she had just graduated, and I think she was like 25 or 26 when she graduated. I was like, oh girl, that couldn't be me graduating almost 27 years old. Mm -mm. could never be me could never be me now oh, look at me graduating at 26 it was me like that's i i yo ever since then i had to be so careful i had to be so careful sorry i got an email from my job as to like saying that kind those kinds of things because mm -mm. also and since we're on the topic of I don't know what we're on top of. I'm ju I'm just going, girl. My mind is just going, and I hope it's all making sense. Um, while we're on the topic of just like friends, unforgiveness, and cutting off, or whatever the case, things that gave me the ick is ghosting people. Ghosting people in 2023 is disgusting. It, it, it's disgusting any year, any time. Y'all, what? It's disgusting any time at any point but for me it was disgusting for me in 2022 um i ghosted some people some people ghosted me um again it came back to me tenfold so i can't even be mad at it um but that is for the birds you guys we are emotionally intelligent okay social psychology says the one thing that people hate in life out of everything is to feel isolated okay no one wants to feel isolated and abandoned no one wants to feel like that because we are social beings 
So when you are ghosting people and you are doing whatever, you may think, and I just recently talked to someone about this, um, you may think that you are like doing something. Like you you really may think like, oh, I cut you off and da 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 da. No, it's hurtful. It's hurtful. Y'all are in your villain, 2022 was all villain girl era and all this stuff, but like you're being mean. Like you're just mean at this point. You're just like a mean person at this point when you do that. Um, I am all for um, mental health and knowing that you can no longer be in someone's life. I'm all for that. But I'm also for understanding that there's a relationship between two people. You are in a relationship with, you know, your friend, your spouse, whatever. It's both of y'all. Y'all have a line. You have, we all have to picture our relationships with people as there's a, like, there's a umbilical cord connected to each other. You just now can't go and snip, snip, snip because there's someone else at the other end. And as much as we have been self, love, soft life, and oh, I'm on my villain girl era and all this stuff, like, y'all are being mean. We have to take account for people's mental. Y'all are not, I don't understand. It's okay for you to feel like, oh, I don't want you as my friend anymore. But you gotta let people know. You gotta say, hey, when you did this, it effed me up and I don't think we can be friends anymore. I'm so sorry. You have to give the other person an opportunity and a chance to hear what is happening and, um, like also apply it to their lives. You just can't call the shots for someone else's life. You saying that you're cutting off somebody who wants to, now this is for healthy situations, not some toxic, your friend came and stole all your money, stole your cat, your dog, blah, 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 and now you got, no, you don't even have to talk to them. And at, at that point, if they do all that, yeah, cut them off, no questions asked, don't even talk to them. They know what they did. But if it's something that's a little more complex, has to do with um, deepened emotions and things like that, it deserves a conversation when you cut someone off that is your friend has been in your life for so long like that you are letting them know that you don't give two F's about them and that's a terrible feeling especially if you as the person who's receiving that felt as if your friendship <coughs> was worth more than that you know what I'm saying um, it's so, it's so effed when y'all be doing that. It's so effed, so bad. Like, and I was just talking to someone who who um, was experiencing this, this same thing. She's not a close friend to me or anything, but like she was telling me that she, you know, experienced something similar and I'm just like, that is effed. So I just feel like the ghosting thing, the cutting thing, people off, I totally support it. But please understand and have the acknowledgement that there are two people. You just can't call the shots for someone else's life. They're going to be affected by you needing a break. And the least you can do is tell them that you no longer want to be their friend, you no longer want to be a part of their lives, or whatever. You you owe that to them. No matter how much you think you don't owe anyone anything, no, you owe people things. That's what and that's another thing that gives me the ick. Is that we have gone into this villain girl era and me, myself, and I type of era that you think that your actions don't affect other people. And that's a problem. Like, you really think that if you do this, that it will not affect somebody mentally? Like, I just had somebody who I literally thought was going to be my ride or die until kingdom come, okay? And she, you know, recently ghosted me for something that I feel like was worth talking about for sure, but not worth dissolving a friendship for, you know? And, um... You know, I don't know whether she didn't think that I would have a big reaction, but I had a big reaction because I was like, girl, now what is this, honey? Like, you, this is affecting me. Like, do you think that you are not important to me, that you can cut me off and I won't care? Like, no, you are important to me, so this hurts me. Do you, are you trying to hurt people? I'm, I'm talking to the point that she goes to me, did, wasn't even returning my calls, wasn't even, and I'll talk about this at another time, but like, was it answer my calls, nothing, to the point that I thought that she was dead, y'all. Because I was like, this is not like her. She would never, like, not answer the phone. Like, she would never, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, I'm about to do a wellness check. I'm about to call the police. The police to come knocking on her black mom's door. 
and asking where my, uh, ooh, I almost said her name, asking where my friend is. Was that worth it to you? It's worth it to have the police come to your house because your friend is so worried that you're dead because you can't even respond after the seventh text? Like, is it worth it? And so that's what I mean. Like, y'all gotta owe somebody explanation because you think, you like, people be caring. People be caring. So when you do that, it doesn't sit well. So the least, the least you can do is just, like, let somebody know what's going on in your mind and your mental. Like, they deserve that. Ciao. Anyways, I can't speak too much, like I said, because I'm, I'm sure I've definitely done that before. I'm sure I've definitely cut somebody off and given no. Actually, no, I absolutely have. I absolutely have cut someone off and never given them explanation. But the thing about it was, that friend, I had just met her. She, she was a new friend. And I didn't think it was worth me talking to you about all this. We don't have no history. We don't have no history. So I don't even think it's worth me going back and forth with you. And that's what I mean. Like, you can, you can, um... You can see whether things are worth talking about or not, whether a friendship or relationship is worth fighting for or not. Because yeah, that that really wasn't, like I just met her. But this friendship right here, this was also a new friendship, but it still was like, you matter to me. Like we, it was very, we were well aware of our importance and our meaning to each other's lives. So like we loved each other, okay? We were, that was my girl, like for real. So I was like, oh my gosh. And honestly, it has me thinking, I was like, you know what? I'm not making no more new friends. Like, I'm tired. But uh, I'm not gonna do that because if I want, you know, if I want to have the support system, I have to, I have to continue to try. I can't give up because having awesome friendships is like such a goal of mine. All, at all times, not even just 2023, but just at all times, just having awesome people in my life, awesome supportive people. I think that's a goal in everyone's life. Um, so I'll never stop trying to like make new friends, but girl, I was at, on the brink. I was like, Lord, if I'm just a doormat, you just gotta say that in plain sight. Y'all, I know that I'm not straightening this hair good. Please. I'm literally going to work and I know that I'll probably take this wig off, put it on a mannequin head and really get to it. But this is just for me to be able to, you know, go to work and look presentable. Also, another thing that gave me the ick is um, putting people on pedestals. That gave me the ick. I, hmm, baby, when you are my friend, you are my friend. You're, you're top tier, you're, you're, you're everything to me. I think you're, you're an amazing person. I think that you can do no wrong. That's how I look at my friendships, and that's terrible. I mean, it's good for good, good-hearted people, but people aren't good-hearted people all the time. Um, and I put a lot of people on pedestals. That's why I be getting so hurt. I'm realizing this now. I be getting so hurt when things go sideways because I'm like, wow, like, I thought you were this, I thought you were that. I just like da 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 and it's like, in reality, they're they're not that. They're not that. They're not that. They're not. They're not who you you think that they're just so. They're so amazing. And oh my gosh, they're not that. And I had to realize that a lot um, um, throughout my life, and just but also now present day. It's like I had to realize that I am. You are not who I'm thinking you are. I'm thinking you are caring, sensitive, kind, and all that. You're actually not that person. And, 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 and you're not that person to the extent. Now, you may be that person, and that person may be, you know, all of these things, but not to the extent that you your mind is making them out to be. And having to, like, just see people as who they are, because then we won't get so hurt when things happen. When you see somebody as, like, the epitome of, like, success and da-da-da-da, you're going to, like, get really, really hurt when something bad happens. That's why whenever, like, something comes out about a celebrity, we all be dumbfounded because it's like, oh my gosh, we put them on a high, high pedestal. Like, no, they're still human and they're still capable of doing this. And they did it. So, and I do that a lot. But I think that, I just do that because, I don't know, I'm nat naturally I am like, um, my heart is a heart of a servant, if that makes sense. Um, my heart is the heart of someone who 
likes to serve people. I don't like to be served. I like to serve you. How can I help you? What do you want? You said you like to do this. Let's go do it. You said you really wanted to buy that. I'm going to buy it for you. I am that, like, I am that friendship. And I, I'm that, that friendship. I'm that friend and I'm that person in general, even with my mom in my relationships and all of that. Um, and so I just put people on a pedestal because that is my role. But I need to understand that. I can't be doing that if someone's not putting me on a pedestal too. Like, I'm putting your feelings above mine. You need to now put my feelings above yours. But you're not doing that. And I'm not talking about anyone specifically, but I'm just saying in general. And so, um, you know, and I feel like that's how sometimes romantic relationships fail too because one person is putting the other on a pedestal, but the other is not reciprocating. But yeah, I, I need to stop doing that. And in this friendship too that I'm, I'm is, is most likely going to dissolve because I don't know how I can forgive someone for doing that to me. Um, I put her on a pedestal, baby. I was like, oh, she is so emotional, intelligent, and she's just amazing, and I love her. And, like, she still is amazing, and I still do love her. But I think I, I thought that she was incapable of hurting me. And everybody's capable of hurting you. Please understand that. And in, in that sediment, another ick that also relates to this is not understanding that people are complex and not understanding that good people can have bad complexities so again like i said she is a good person this person that i'm talking about she's a good person it was it was a bad it was a bad move what she did it was a bad move how how she responded to conflict but she is a good person and that i need to understand that she can be an amazing good person and still have um not so good tendencies um, that's my problem. I think that if you're a good, in my head, I'm like, if you're a good person, you're a good person, and you're never gonna do anything bad. And in reality, they absolutely will. They're not exempt. Um, and also understanding that people are complex. I feel like, um, I feel like sometimes we give up on relationships, romantic ones, and friendships because we fail to understand that people are complex. People are not this easy front to front to back, easy book with, you know, a few sentences on each page. Um, there's a lot of chapters. There's a lot of titles, subtitles. There's a lot of all of that in this book, in this person. And we need to understand that. Um, we need to understand that sometimes people's reactions are not going to be what you deem as appropriate because they are very complex. Um, their life and their perspective is so much different than yours. Their upbringing is so much different. Their environment, everything is so much different. And we have to understand that. And so even in this situation, I have to understand that this person probably um, didn't hand, does, doesn't handle conflict well. So she was unable to talk to me about a conflict that she was having. Um, I have to now start understand, put myself in her shoes and understand that perspective as someone who hates confrontation. So I'm just not going to talk to you. I'm just going to not talk to you ever. Like I'm just not going to talk to you because I don't even want to deal with it. I have to understand that even though it doesn't feel good to me, who's very expressive, I have to understand that perspective and I just have to like go with it. Now just because I understand doesn't mean I'll, I'll forgive and whatever, I'll, you know, I'll forgive. See? See? There goes that unforgiveness. I will forgive, but doesn't mean I'll forget and double down. Um, yeah, but I can understand with that. And that's something another friend told me. Like, she was like, when we were in an argument, she was like, I can love you, but I don't have to deal with it. I was like, oh! And that hurt me so bad when she said that. When she said that, I was like, oh my god! But I have now I see what she's saying. It's like, I can love you and all that stuff, but I don't have to deal with all this mess that's going on in your life. Like, and I, I hear it. It sucks because we all want friends that are going to just stay with us the way God would. But again, you are putting people on a pedestal they can't uphold. Like, this person is not God and they're not going to just stick through all of your transgressions and all that stuff. You can't. You're putting people on a, a pedestal and expecting too much of them. I do a lot. I, I expect so much of people because I'm like, I would give you everything. I would give you everything. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I expect people to do that in return. But like... It's not always going to be like that. Um, a perfect example is I have a friend now um, who is going through a really tough time in her life, like mentally. 
and she has talked to me about this problem for months every day day in day out we are talking about the same problem and I'm not I'm not I'm not tired of it I'm not now what I may get tired of is the fact that I feel like you're not being receptive you're not hearing me you're not listening to me but I'll never get tired of you talking to me about the same problem over and over and over and over again till kingdom come something that's given me the ick too is taking all my problems to my friends and not taking them to God I need to start doing that more so that um you know people get overwhelmed people get fatigued I don't but I can't say that just because I don't get fatigued that other people can't get fatigued um so all I know is I need to start taking my problems a little more to God and a little less to other people okay another thing that gave me the ick this year or gives me the ick is people gatekeeping and I know it's a cute funny trend on TikTok but it's actually like quite annoying like oh girl like that's cool you learned about you know how to you know do this tech thing how did you learn about oh it's on YouTube yeah girl I just typed it up it's, it's on YouTube oh yeah but I know but like you seem like you know you really got it so like what do you think is the oh no I got it on YouTube just go ahead type in YouTube tech stuff and you'll find it Oh, girl, that wig is so cute. Where'd you get it? Girl, I don't know. It's this girl. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Girl, I'll be sitting there like, but I'm asking you. Oh, girl, it's free information. It's everywhere. Just, just Google it. It's crazy to me. Like, oh, girl, where'd you get your car? This girl, just Google it. Yeah, there's places everywhere. Just Google it. You'll find it. Gosh, y'all be killing me. Like, I'm asking you because you are easy access. I'm asking you because you are a real human person who can help me um, through any like negative obstacle I have to go through. Why do y'all do that? And I get it. It's all well. If I had to go and find out on my own, then you gotta go find out on your own. Okay, but again, I think I have such a collective collectivist mindset and feeling like people just like should work together that I just don't understand like people don't want to be helping nobody it is crazy I, I get it though because it's like you don't want anyone to be above you and I've been there before I don't know I just I, I don't I don't understand it and I think that there's room for everybody there's room for everybody just because you tell the next person how to get into tech doesn't mean that they're now gonna like be above you or something it's just like not gonna work like that you have something that they don't and they have something that you don't and understanding that there's enough for everybody and that you are all gonna crush different lanes is really vital for you not being a gatekeeper like there's no need to gatekeep just because I tell somebody where I got my wig doesn't mean that they're gonna make their wig look like mine you know Okay, you can take the horse to the water. Okay, something else that gave me the ick in 2023, I mean in 2022, was this whole idea of soft life. Soft life is mental for me. That's that's what I think at least. All this, all this time, all 2022, I was trying to like create this soft life. Oh my gosh, all these candles and all these body washes and my skincare routine is gonna have 10 steps and all of these things. And the, it, it wasn't creating a soft life. It was actually a hard life. It was actually hard trying to maintain and keep up with all those things when I didn't want to. A soft life is what you make it mentally. A soft life isn't being a, a house girlfriend or something or whatever is going viral on TikTok about being a house girlfriend, staying in the house. Is that fun for you? Because you're doing it by yourself. Hello? I said it. I said it. You're doing it by yourself. Is that really a soft life? Or is that a lonely life? You're taking all these bubble baths and all these things and you have like no family, no friends around you because you've isolated yourself because it's your world and you're just the main character and like all of this is breeding narcissism. I said it. I wrote a paper about it and I'm saying it here. When did my thing turn off? Okay. You're breeding this soft life era, this villain era is breeding narcissism. 
and narcissistic people who are going to raise narcissistic children and we're just going to be a narcissistic generation and i just can't i'm not here for it i can't do it um soft life means to me less stress less worry and more control over your life it means self-discipline like i said it means self-love it means making things easier on yourself you have to work at something we can't just exist and a lot of people just want to exist like i just want to exist and like go shopping da, da, da. but what is the purpose like what's your purpose what are you doing what's your purpose are you helping what, what are you doing are you helping people in life do you want to be a doctor do you want to be um, an influencer do you want to work out here do you want to go to a shelter all you're thinking about is myself and my soft life and me 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 that's crazy that is crazy something that's given me the ick is not allowing your male children to do things that aren't conventionally for males like playing with dolls or playing with cooking material that gives me the absolute ick um i have worked with children for over seven years now um in the school setting in a daycare setting in a pre-k setting and what i do now um which is behavior therapy it gives me the ick because when you are hindering okay let me do a little story time i worked in a daycare and um one of the teachers actually had her son in our class and she forbid him to play with dolls forbid him and i was just like why can't he play with dolls i guess my my idea is that people don't want met boys to play with dolls because then they're gonna grow up being gay as if being gay is gay is a problem it's not a problem I mean, for some people it is. I, I, I get it. I'm a Christian woman too, so I, I get the idea. But as for me, we don't got a problem over here. However, I understand, you know, her religion and her feeling away. And, and the boy was black, so I get it. Like, whatever. Cool. I understand. I understand what's happening. Um, To me, I feel like that is the reason that black males have a problem building platonic friendships with women. Hear me out. If you are telling your child at a young age, you cannot play with this girl doll, especially, let's let's be real, so it's the black boys. It's the black boys. Let's just be absolutely real here. It's the black boys. It's the black community that really be honing down on black men, okay, um, especially as it pertains to sexuality. So if you're doing that in the mind of the little boy, he's thinking, Oh, well, I, when I'm doing my pretend play, I can't do my pretend play with a, with a girl. I have to do it with a boy. But all that's in the boy's hands are guns and swords. Well, in the girl doll's hands, it was a pot and a pan and a book and a little baby. It was vulnerability and it was soft. And perhaps a little boy could have gone up to the Barbie girl and said, Hey, Barbie, I'm having a really hard time, you know, with school i feel like school is tough and the barbie could have been like oh really what's tough about it here i read this book and it was a really cool book do you want to see what it says and what it talks about about feeling good and dealing with bullies oh sure barbie thanks like that's how i'm thinking they're playing however if they're playing with boy barbie it's a hey i'm really having a struggle with school um and people are bullying me Oh, really? Take this gun and this knife and let's chop them up. Yeah, let's chop them up. Like, that's, that's the conversation that they're having, you know? And I see a lot of people doing pretend play, and pretend play is so important with children. And if you strip that away from them, you strip them away from having the ability to have that pretend play with girl dolls and boy dolls, they are going to struggle feeling like they can come to a woman about whatever it is they're feeling. They're going to struggle with feeling like coming to anyone because you've denied access for them with this pretend play. And pretend play really shapes children's eyes and ideas about how life works. For example, in pretend play, there's people who are like, when they're doing school, when they're pretending school, there's little girls that are like, I want to be the student. And the little girl's like, I want to be the teacher. What does that show you? That shows you that the teacher likes to help people, likes to teach people things and is innovative and, and creative. And it shows you that the student um, likes to learn, likes to hear, likes to be a listener, likes to be a helper. 
their shape in that pretend play when they're playing school you think it's just all pretend no even just them picking the character of wanting to be the student and wanting to be the teacher shows you how their mind is shaping and their ideas about how life is going to work and their role in life right so if you are taking taking away that girl doll from that black boy I feel like it's a problem just because he plays with a, a, a doll, a girl doll, doesn't mean he's going to be gay. I don't understand. I don't understand that reference. Like, please help me, y'all. I don't understand why a black boy playing with a doll means that they're going to be gay. It could mean they want to be a gynecologist. It could mean they're really into fashion. It could mean that they're really into hair. But you can be all of those things as a black male and not be gay. I don't understand. I don't I don't understand it's so it's so sad to me do not interrupt a child's pretend play do not now if they're doing something violent like oh yeah this comes gun da -da 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 -da, boop, boop, boop. like okay yeah intervene but if he's flipping burgers let him flip the burgers I don't understand let them have self-expression they, they don't have the vocabulary yet to really have self-expression and in their play is how they're expressing you are hindering them from expressing. Child, don't get me started because one thing about me is I love kids. Okay, that's one thing y'all should know about me for sure. And I am an advocate for kids and individuality. I know that we should train our children how we want them to be as the Bible says, absolutely. But I don't think the Bible says stop them from playing with things that aren't don't fit their gender roles. Like, that is really crazy to me. I'm so sorry. Please allow these kids to have self-expression. Now, when they get older, maybe you can start talking to them about whether you feel like being gay or transsexual or whatever is wrong. Whatever, cool, have that conversation with them when they are able to understand. They're not able to understand why mommy is telling me I cannot play with a Barbie. They don't get it. They don't know why you're telling them that. They just think it's not, you're not supposed to do that. So now... I'm just not supposed to do that. When they're older, you start putting your values and your wishes on your child. Cool. But when they're younger, let them do what they got to do. All right, y'all. My uh, battery got exhausted, whatever that means. But I went ahead and finished this side. So, not the flap lifted. See, mm -mm. I can't be dealing with that all the time. That is crazy. But, um... Yeah, like I was saying, um, kids are very important to me, and I think just how we bring them up is, like, really important, and, uh, yeah, I just let kids be who they are. They don't under they don't understand. This is all play. This is all understanding. This is all exploring the world, and, like, teach them in, in ways they must be brought up, yes, but, um, don't restrict their, um, don't restrict them. Don't don't restrict their process. Um, and as it pertains to religion, something that gives me the ick is like parents like forcing their religion on their children. Um, I want my children to be Christian. I want my children to believe in God. Uh, you know, I don't this whole crystal mess. I don't really want them to be all up in that. Um, uh, because. I hope I'm not offending anybody when I say that, but it's just, we got to understand that the crystals and the water and the moon and the sun that you're all praising to and worshiping is worshiping the maker. The very, the very rock that you have is from God. So I understand people use it as a tool. It's a tool. I get it. But you can just go straight to the source. You don't, you don't, ha you don't need any extra rocks and charms and a circle and a rope with a light lighter and a sage and like that you're just doing you're just doing something extra and you're actually inviting other things in um but yeah i want my children to believe in, in god obviously but i don't want to force it down their throat because there could be um there's a possibility that because i forced them so much that they want to rebel which is something I did young when I was younger as well. Like I like rebelled from it because it's like it was just such a force. Like okay, and I want them to come to God on their own. I'm like not even doing this good. 
but I want them to come to God on their own you know what I'm saying and I want to hope that my you know my husband and I are such big of an influence to them that they just want to be like mommy and daddy anyway like I don't even have to do much they just want to follow mommy and daddy anyway all right guys so that is the end of the video I went ahead and straightened my hair off camera or not sure ciao I'm so tired I went ahead and finished my hair off camera because my battery got exhausted and it died um I didn't even hot comb the top but the top is giving it's giving flat I can't so I'm definitely gonna hot comb it later not now though I'm tired I'm hungry I'm about to eat take a nap before I have to go to work but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what were your icks of 2022. Um, I definitely have a lot more. So if you like this video, definitely let me know. Thumbs up, comment down below, and I can definitely make a part two. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope I didn't offend anyone. I hope you enjoyed what I was trying to say and saw my heart. And um, yeah, I love you guys. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.